Stallion, I, I have a lot of takeaways from this podcast we have with the Wells family. The first one is you must stop building other people's businesses and become the architect of your own future. Ooh, man, I, I just love the way that Daniel described how he was thinking through what is it going to take for me to get out of where we are. If we want our family to succeed, it's going to require us to take action and massive action is what they've done. And I can't wait for you to listen to this podcast. What, what's your yeah. take? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback off that and say this, what they outline in this podcast is the process that it takes to win. Right. And they, they outline it pretty well. Like, number one, you have to know that there's a problem with your plan. Like they, they knew they couldn't continue to play defense. Like the Dave Ramsey's of the world will teach you to play defense, spend less, cut the budget, create the budget, all those things. Those are good, all good and well. But when your means are not going to be enough to actually save and invest and create wealth or architect your own family's wealth plan, you got to do something different, right? So step one, you have a problem. Step two, invest in yourself. They took action to invest in their education. Step three, knowing their investor DNA profile, like what sort of investor they are, gave them, step four, the ability to take action in the right direction. I mean, we've, we've said this over and over on the show, but how many, how many times can you take action in the wrong direction before you just, you're out of luck? Like you just can't afford it. Well, I, I remember when we were at our Inner Circle Live event, one of the speakers said that he was chasing 12 different ideas and was an inch deep in 12 different directions, wasn't getting ahead, wasn't getting him any closer, and almost quit, right? Like, I think that that's the problem. When you don't understand your investor DNA, you don't understand what the night, the right next thing is for you. So it, there's so many call to actions within this podcast. One, just taking action. But for, for you who don't know what to do, I'm going to call you to go to wealthwallwallstreet.com forward slash free call because there is where a coach can jump on with you and help lead you through a process that we like to call the right next thing that helps take all of this ideas and jumble of information and put it into something very practical and tactical that you can follow. But if you're listening to this and you've already identified what your investor DNA is and you say, man, okay, they have pushed me over. Danielle explaining how she's doing this as a mother of four and able to get the kids involved and have success with that within their family doing the short-term rental model. And you want to take the same course that they did, go to wealthwallwallstreet.com forward slash STR course. Stallion, let's don't take any more away from this. Let's jump in right now with our good friends, Daniel and Danielle Wells. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome in tribe. You're in for a success story today. We have Daniel and Danielle Wells live in the studio. So glad to have you guys. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. I'm not, I'm not certain you're the first husband and wife couple, but and definitely the, the name being so similar. You're going to, you're going to throw that. That's, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Yeah. When you guys met each other, you're like, we're destined. <laughs> it's meant to be. <laughs> well, it, this is really fun for us because, you know, Joey and I just love watching the growth that you've had over the last couple of years. We love seeing your family in our Zoom calls when we're having meetings. And it, it just to me, it, it just it, it speaks to generational opportunities when you're, you're, you're getting involved as a husband and wife team, because that's not always, that's not necessarily always normal. So my first question is for you is thinking through like, 
when you guys are making financial decisions, has it always been natural for you guys to do that together? I would say no, um, not financial decisions, but early on in our marriage, we had the opportunity to work together uh, for probably four or five years. Um, and I think that just kind of gave us a good, um, I guess, launching pad on how to communicate, how to make decisions together, uh, not only for our home and our marriage, but also like in a working environment. So. Uh, and that just kind of trickled over into other things, whether that was our finances, uh, starting businesses together, short term rental businesses or land business. It, it just helped us know how to communicate what each other's strengths and weaknesses are as well. Well, I love you seem to do it perfectly. And my wife and I are so different. I think it would be way, way less as um simple is the way that you guys make it maybe is the word I'm looking for Danielle but I I, I would love to just share kind of the journey that you had so I'm gonna start with you Danielle would you mind just sharing just kind of like your mindset on money before you ever heard anything about wealth without Wall Street or any of these concepts that have been shared through our podcast kind of what was your background around money what did you think about money and um, I, I'm interested in kind of where you started See, I thought he was going to rat on me. So you're giving me the chance to talk first. <laughs> <laughs> when we first got married, you know, he would set up these financial meetings, newly married. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I do not want to be talking about this. <laughs> How long is this meeting going to last? Um, why, if, if we have money in the bank account, then we're good. Like, why do we have to set this budget? Why do we have to figure out all these things where we're spending stuff and, you know, talk through all this? I mean, I could be doing so many other things right now. And so it has definitely been a journey for me. And, uh, and he's like, okay, we're going to set a timer. We're going to, you know, dive in. We're going to come together. It's not just going to be me. It's going to be you too. And we're going to have a discussion and I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. And so it definitely has been a journey for me. And he has definitely always been more financially minded, but has come, you know, I've kind of come along with him and definitely learned some things through the process. And now as parents, we're, we're, finding ways to try and pass that along to our kids as well so that they don't grow up to be an adult like me that doesn't want to know, doesn't want to set a budget, doesn't want to, you know, think about those things, but really wants to be a good steward of what they've been given. So. Well, and Danielle, or Daniel, tell us like from your perspective, um, what your mindset was before and then yeah. how that led into marriage as well. Yeah, I would say for, uh, so yeah, that definitely was uh, Danielle's and our experience. Uh, I would say the only thing we knew were the talking heads that were out there. So whether that's, you know, TV and the big one at the time when we got married was uh, Dave Ramsey. I know that's a curse word, but uh, uh, but that's, that's who we read and that's who we knew. So, um, and I would say that's, that's how we set up our budget and that's how we, um, uh, set up everything. So we had, you know, folders or, you know, envelope system where we would just, all right, this is what we're spending on this. And this is what we spend on this. And y'all may ask the question, but so like, what was the change? Uh, and the change for us was like, Hey, we don't make enough money to keep up the system, you know, like, uh, so there has to be something different. Uh, if we want kids, if we want a house, if we want, uh, some of the things uh, that we saw, you know, previous generations in our family have, uh, we can't continue to do it because we, we just can't out earn it at this point. So, so you're, you're saying you started to realize that you had an income problem. You could, you could manage it the way that you've been taught, but there was a bigger problem on the income side. Yeah. Yeah. There was, we're, we're playing defense, you know, but at, after a while you still got to put points on a board. Uh, so we, and we weren't, we didn't know how to increase, you know, our income from our, our regular jobs. Uh, so no matter how hard we try, you know, essentially your fate is always in somebody else's hand. And they're saying, hey, we you did good this year, but somebody else did better. So they get the promotion and where you left at at the end of that, you know. Hey, Daniel, talk to me a little bit about some of those early conversations. Like, obviously, you guys were seeing, hey, we got to put points on the board, but 
where is that going to happen? Like, what did that look like for you guys? What what were you guys consider, considering early on as options? Was it working more hours or was it finding other options? Yeah, I mean, thankfully, we were able to pay off debt. Um, but like he was saying, just trying to figure out ways to earn more. So initially, um, you know, we had done apartment life, which is where we got discounted rent for doing some events. Um at an apartment complex. And, um, and so that was able to like help us discount rent. So then we're able to use money in different ways. Um, and then we did eventually start off flipping houses, having rent long-term rental properties, um, and had a few of those, but then it's just going through the hoops with the banks of getting the loan of trying to, you know, turn, turn this around as quickly as possible. And it always takes longer than you think it's going to. Um, and then trying to, you know, produce income or some kind of profit through that. Um, and so then, you know, Daniel had heard about short-term rental properties and he started doing a lot of research about, um, about the opportunity with short-term rentals. And, um, and so then we ended up taking, the course with you guys and it was just the launching pad for us um such a huge blessing um for us not only to be able to produce income as entrepreneurs and to create that for us but also for our family and i know we've mentioned to you guys that we our kids get paid by wellspring homes they do different jobs and they love getting that check in the mail <laughs> so we're trying to teach them not only to receive the check but also we want you to find ways to be able to create your own, you know, income, not just to be dependent on somebody else sending that check, but also, you know, let's find ways that you can be entrepreneurs and trying to teach them even at a young age, what that looks like to, you know, to do different things and not necessarily follow the, the, the path that everybody else is doing. I love that. And I want to come back to that because I, I think there's some parents out there that are trying to figure out ways to get their kids involved. But Daniel, Daniel said that you started looking into short term rentals. What ex, what exactly excited you about that? Why did you think that that was a path that fits you guys as investor DNA? Yeah, I would say um, one, like the numbers that you're reporting as far as returns, like we were we we're getting, you know, we had a long term rental and I asked my dad had started uh, doing real estate and doing long term rentals. So I said, after we do all this, we renovate the home, uh, we market it, uh, we get a renter in there. I pay all my expenses. What am I expecting? You know, I have this asset that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. What's my monthly passive on it? It's like maybe two hundred, three hundred dollars. <laughs> and I'm like, I just put in a lot of work for a hundred or two hundred dollars a month. Uh, so I was like, there has to be a better way. Uh, and then hearing that okay, this is less of a upfront cost to me, um, but also a higher return. Uh, that excited me. Uh, but the numbers still didn't work out until I want to say maybe we talked to um, you all and just found out like uh, the thing that tipped the boat for me was that your weekends would always be booked. Uh, so once I heard that and knowing, okay, this is my break even point and this is the point at which we make profit every month, uh, and if we can just book our weekends and book a few days during a month and we make money uh, more than 200 or 300 dollars because that was my threshold i was like all right we, we can do this you know so that was the turning point for us hey, uh, let's talk a little bit about that because people always want to know does it actually work so you guys went through the short-term rental course learned a little bit about that i, I i'm interested in what that your perspective of that course because people see a price tag on our, on our, you know, when they're inside our community, they see $2,000 and they go, wow, that seems like a lot of money. Is it going to just be some videos? And then, you know, I kind of ho hope it makes it. So talk a little bit about your experience of going through that process and has it worked? It has it produced more than the two to $300 that you were going to get on the long-term rental side. Danielle, would you like to start on that first? I would love to. And first, I want to mention that we have four kids, eight and under. OK, so Ooh, everybody, just, everybody okay. just said, whoa. Right. <laughs> so you can do this. Um, and then when we started, we had maybe a seven month old um, it, while we were going through the course. And so it doesn't matter if you 
you know, if you have young kids or if you have older kids, um, if you don't have any kids, like I feel like whatever stage of life you're in, you can make this happen. And um, it does take sacrifice and it takes work. It doesn't just happen like magically overnight, but it does work and it is worth it. Daniel had to convince me because I'm like, oh, what if we like, you know, go under and we spend all this money? And he's like, just just give it a try. Like, you know, just see, I just trust me. I think this is going to be really great. And it really has been such a blessing for our family. And um, and so going through the course, I feel like it is worth every penny. I mean, the the insight that you gain and the resources that you receive, it would have taken us years to figure all of those things out. And so it just saved us so much headache and so many issues because we had such like more of a firm foundation starting off. And, um, and we've been we've been pretty much super hosts ever since we began. Like as soon as we were, you know, able to qualify under Airbnb, we've been super hosts. We've been able to maintain that. Um, we've worked, you know, it's not like we haven't had hiccups and things that we've had to learn along the way. We definitely have, but it set us up so well to be able to start off. We had started off with four short-term rentals and now we have nine and we're, um, you know, discussing and trying to figure out ways that we can, um, continue to to grow our business so um yeah it was just a really great launching pad for us that is so sticking cool i love hearing uh, how you guys have expanded and uh, what what would you say has been the biggest challenge for you daniel in terms of the short-term rental business because we don't want to just talk about all the good yeah. things it's you know how how does it challenge you yeah i would say probably for us one of the challenges is um the 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 influx of the market because people are seeing that you are that it's a profitable business model uh so you got a lot of competition coming in good thing we were ahead of some of the competition so we can adjust um and then too i would say uh we do it what we do rental arbitrage through uh, apartment complexes uh and just talking to some of these property managers and finding out like hey what is your pain point or what is um what's your sticking point that you don't want this to happen in your apartment complex and trying to sell them on like hey it's going to be different you know uh so building up enough of a reputation uh, reputation in the community where uh, people kind of don't know that we do it. And that's a good thing if the property manager is like, yeah, I didn't even know that you were doing it here uh, because they they change over so much. Uh, and then when we go there, it's like, yeah, we actually want to do some more here uh, and we'll take the apartments that nobody else wants to rent uh, because we can make money for you and we can make a profit as well. So that's really cool. And I, I, we've experienced the same thing. It's the, the apartment complexes that you're in for a while they may initially have those hesitations because they think oh well, there's gonna be parties right because that's the only reason somebody's gonna rent an apartment yeah. right it must be a party going on <laughs> that's not the case for yeah. you guys what's your typical traveler who's your typical guest staying in your in your um short-term rentals go ahead then y'all i would say we have a lot of people because we're in dallas and so um we have a lot of people come in for medical procedures we have people who are renovating their houses that have stayed with us or maybe have, you know, insurance claims like a flood or a tornado, whatever happens. Um, we've also just had people that are coming to visit Dallas and want to see the area um, or friends and family in the area. So it really is. And we've also had people who stayed for months at a time that are traveling for work. Um, so it really has been a wide variety of yeah. people kind of with that. Yeah. Well, people that stay for months playing, paying the short-term rental rate, you know, so they're not, yeah. paying, oh, yeah. they're not paying rent, they're paying the short-term rental <laughs> rate. Uh, we get a lot of people that come in for work as well, and they may just, uh, as Danielle said, they may just stay with us, uh, which helps during the week. Uh, and then we get our, our weekend warriors who uh, want to go shopping in Dallas and uh, come in for all the sporting events that we have as well. If you've listened to our show for any length of time, you've heard us talk about infinite banking and how we were able to use that concept to create over $50,000 a month in passive income. But it's just not that easy to figure out how does this all connect into my own personal system? 
Stallion, that's why we created the passive income operating system, bro. It shows you how to turn active income into passive income. It makes all the steps come together. If you would like to get access to it as a podcast listener, we've never given this away in public before. Go to whatswhatwallstreet.com forward slash P-I-O-S. There was nothing worse than walking into class when you're in school and the teacher saying, pop quiz day. Why? Because you were unprepared. Are you unprepared, though, for financial freedom? Don't be. Find out how close you are by taking our 30-second quiz at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash quiz. I would love to talk about, you've heard some of the, the, the pros. Tell me about that worst case scenario. That There's always that, that one scenario goes really bad. And I, I'd love to hear, like, share that, right? Because somebody who hasn't done short-term rental yet, they don't know what it even looks like. They don't know how bad does it look like. Is it a disaster or is it just a mini disaster? Share if you would, maybe Danielle, your your experience there. And Danielle, Daniel, you can put some color to it afterwards. Sometimes Daniel has to talk me off the ledge because I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I have spent so much time, money, effort. I have four children and we are sacrificing, you know, all of this. And they're going to come in here and, you know, tear something up, do something crazy. And he's like, they're gone in three days. It's not like we have them for a year rent. You know, they're gone in like a few days. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. So thankfully that does not happen very often, but we've had people that it's like one of our first um, people that stayed in our two bedroom apartment. It's like our cleaner goes in there and she's like, uh, yeah, I smell smoke and it's not cigarette. And we have somebody checking in that afternoon. So we're like, okay, how do we get this clean? How do we get it ready? You know? And then um, just recently we had, we don't, we don't host pets, pets at all of our apartments. And so our cleaner goes in there and she's like sending us pictures. And I'm like, what is going on? There is just dog poo all over the carpet, just every, everywhere even on the door, on the table. I mean, and so we were like, okay, well, thankfully we have acquired some things over the years. We have a special vacuum cleaner that like, gets super stains out. And we're like, you know, over there trying to help her get stuff out. But I'm like, I'm on my hands and knees scrubbing dog poo. Like, no, this is why I don't have a pet at home. And um, I'm like, Daniel, you better make sure that we get reimbursed for this. Okay. Cause I am, <laughs> this is humbling, but thankfully, like I said, it doesn't happen very often. We really do have a good, you know, screening system where we get a lot of great people that you don't even ever hear too much from, but you do have those every once in a while that you're just like, what? what were you thinking? And like, I would never treat somebody else's place this way, but you're not necessarily hosting yourself. You're hosting, you know, anybody from anywhere. So it's been a learning experience. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, on, on, on some of those situations, one, to give context, is that like a one out of 10, every 10 guests, one out of every 15 guests? Yeah, what would you I, say? One, one out of every uh, 12 months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot of visits. Right? Yeah. 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 A lot of visits in between then those. Yeah. Yeah. And what, so not, to talk scare about, people away. not to scare people away from doing it, but there are people that you sometimes, yeah, deal yeah. with like any yeah. business, like yeah. any company. Yeah. You're hosting people. Uh, so you, you don't know all of their background and you can screen as best as you can, but uh, who's to say that it's going to be different in any other industry? You never know who's going to get on a flight with you. You know, like you never know who's in a restaurant with you is it's people, you know? So, yeah. And and talk about that when she said um, you better get reimbursed for this. Like what, what does that process look like and how have you had success with that? Talk to, to us about that. Yeah. So that particular guest was through Airbnb and uh, Airbnb. They have a, a air cover uh, policy and you can ask the guest to. Uh, so at that point, I've, we figured if the guests had left that, uh, that they weren't too inclined to pay for. It. <laughs> so uh, we went to Airbnb and essentially you just got to pre present evidence uh, like, hey, this is how much this costs to repair this or to fix it, to make it new. Uh, this is how much it costs our contractors, our cleaners to clean this. Um, and we create an invoice um, and we send it them. We send pictures. Uh, we explain what happened, when it happened. Um, and essentially, uh, they go through their internal process, which I don't know how it looks on their end. Uh, but we just stay on top of them and say, when are we going to get 
paid for <laughs> the damages that incurred. Uh, and eventually they, they paid. They paid probably, I would say, within a week or two after receiving all of our evidence. I would I would think if you could send pictures of some feces, you're you're gonna get a little <laughs> bit of an expedited response. Um, okay. It's just me, just me guessing. I don't know. Take attention. Yeah. I, all right. So I, I do want to come back, uh, Danielle. You you talked a little bit about there about teasing of how you have your kids involved in the business and how they they're they're able to even earn money, and I'm sure that that's given you an opportunity to maybe teach a little bit about money, maybe in a different light than what maybe the two of you learned. Talk a little bit about that. So we um, we like I said, we have eight and under. So as they get older, we plan on them doing more with our business and being able to take on more things. But when we were setting up our our locations, we had them putting pillows and pillowcases. We had them, you know, opening boxes for us and pulling out different things from the boxes. So basically our moving crew. And then, um, and then when, when we have to refill our inventory and our storage units, we have them pull stuff from, from, uh, from our storage here. We have some at our house. We bring it over to our apartments because we have three different complexes that we're at. And so they help us bring that. They're helping us pull it. Daniel has had one of our daughters do some data entry. I don't know how successful that was, but we're always trying to find new ways to get them involved. And, um, and they, I mean, they know what profit is. They know what expenses are. They know, you know, what it looks like to try and create your own business. We've talked through some of those things or even like, Hey, this is what mommy and daddy are facing. You know, what do you, how would you handle this? Or what do you think about this? And so uh, it's always interesting to get, to see how their minds are already kind of thinking about those things. But um, it's definitely a family business for us, not only for us to be able to teach them lifelong lessons uh, that they can carry on to whatever they end up doing, but also like we personally, we pray for our cleaners. We pray for the people that, that stay at our apartments. And so like they get to, you know, be a part of that as well. And, um, and they've gotten to stay at some of our places too. So they really like that benefit. So, <laughs> yeah, that is so cool. Now, wh what kind of prayers were they throwing up for the people that left the dog poop? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious on that. <laughs> we, we didn't, we didn't oh, that we. What they sow. <laughs> <laughs> well, so praying for mom and dad's hearts, what they were praying for. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Mommy and daddy are very angry right now, Lord. Um, so I, I I love that there's a those are some intangible things that this business has done for you right it's uh, that's created those conversations that you wouldn't have had otherwise I love that what well, is there anything um, tangible specifically yeah. that this business has now allowed you guys to do as a family or created some sort of freedom that you didn't have talk to us about that yeah just just with owning a business uh, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it depends on how you feel about them, you know, but like uh, most of the wealthy people in our country use uh, the tax code to their advantage, you know, so like uh, very tangibly when we pay our kids yeah, as, as part of it, we want them to know what it looks like to earn a dollar even at their age. But uh, we get a tax advantage for paying our kids, you know, uh, so uh, we want to take advantage of that as much as possible. Um, I would say also tangibly, like, uh, we can put vehicles on our business. Therefore, like our vehicles are not paid by us personally. So when our car, when we're going back home to Louisiana for Christmas and we need new tires, all four new tires, uh, for our van tires have gotten expensive from the time that I first started driving. So, um, we can pay with that for our business, uh, trips that we take, uh, when we met y'all in San Antonio, uh, those are expenses that the business uh, incurs. Uh, so when we go out to eat uh, on our dates and we talk business, uh, that becomes a business expense. I'm not giving tax advice to anybody uh, on <laughs> uh, out here. So, uh, but just tangibly, it, it has helped give us when we were talking at first that breathing room that we didn't have and that we didn't know how to uh, achieve. It's given us some of that breathing room where we can be like, okay, yes, we can do this as a family now, uh, which is so refreshing and freeing. Danielle, is there any other things you'd add to that that, that your husband forgot? 
I was even thinking just, you know, with infinite banking, like, and, and even talking about, um, future, um, expenses that our kids, whether it's college or vehicles, or, you know, if they want to start their own business, um, being able to, to have that, we, we allow, we have our business feed into the infinite banking that we have in order to set up for future, you know, either savings or future expenses. Um, and so that has been a huge blessing as well, because it allows you freedom to be able to put in, um, more than we would have been able to with, with other jobs that we've had. Um, and so that, that has been a great blessing as well. And even just with our kids being paid, you know, we use that for other expenses as well. Um, so basketball, I know that y'all were talking about sports and stuff like that. I've heard y'all talk about with y'all's kids, like basketball, dance, you know, all those things that kind of add up really quickly when you have four kids. Um, we're able to help through the business that way. So that, that's so cool. I, I know we're starting to, to slowly run out of time here, but I do want to transition because Daniel, you mentioned a second ago, you guys went on a trip and you saw us down in San Antonio. We were at the Lange boot camp. So you guys have, have considered and maybe even started a new entrepreneurial endeavor. What is it um, that made you interested in land and, and how's that been going? Yeah, thanks for asking. It's um, land for us. Uh, it fit uh, a lot of the investor DNA profile for us. Uh, so like a low entry point, uh, it's, it takes some work on the front end. But uh, as it gets going, it, it's just something that can be uh, as passive as we would like it to be. Uh, so those were things that kind of interest us. Uh, and then there's a lot of it, you know, so competition is uh I guess very scarce, you know, so um, not many people know how to price and are fine vacant land, uh, but a lot of people want to buy it. Uh, so that was those were things that interest us in starting that business. And uh, just like short term rentals, you know, you're going to go through your hiccups, uh, but it's uh, something that's uh, we're working through right now. And we're, we're still learning a lot about that business. So. Well, and and. How have you been able to use that business so far? Like, are you are you starting to see it to where it's going to be profitable for you, or is it still like in the learning stages? Like, tell us about that. Yeah, so it's still very much in the learning stages. Uh, we signed up for the coaching, uh, so we're being coached right now, um, and we definitely see down the line. Like, hey, if we continue to make deposits into this, we will receive returns on it in the future. Uh, but right now it's, it's kind of like that dip, you know, where we're just kind of like, all right, let's just uh, continue to put our head down and plow away and uh, trust this process. So, Danielle, I have a question for you um, in terms of the time it takes. Um, you guys have already built one successful business. About how many hours a week does it take for you now at this stage to run the short term rental business? And then how many hours a week are you now allocating to the land business? Like just trying to think about your mother for, you know, uh, this is, this is not easy, but maybe some practical of how you've gotten there. Yes, that is a great question. So when we don't have to scrub dog poop out of carpet, it's pretty chill. So thankfully we have a lot of good, like, automated messages and systems that are in place that help us be able to communicate um, with our guests and really alleviate a lot of the problems or questions that they might have during their stay. Um, and so that has helped a ton. But really, honestly, like um, Daniel has been running with the land business. He has sold a bunch of land and he's been kind of spearheading that. And so I have been more taking on the Airbnb business or our short term rental business. And um, and so probably like so our kids have a little bit of quiet time every day. So I'm sitting down a few times a week, looking at prices, looking at availability, um, looking at cleanings and making sure everything is ready to go with that, communicating with our cleaners. Um, and so I would say, you know, at first it was more on the front end of just trying to get everything set up. But now I feel like we have a really good rhythm to where it's probably, I don't know, Daniel, what would you say? Like, he, I think you usually say what five to seven hours a week. Like it's yeah. really, and we have nine properties, and so again, as long as we don't have some kind of um, 
poop explosion that we're dealing with is pretty chill. And thankfully, um, it again, we have some good systems in place. We've got a really some really great cleaners as well that that are a huge help. And so it really is, again, it does take that wheel kind of turn in a little bit slowly, but then it really starts to pick up. And, um, and so then it kind of starts to streamline itself. Um, and so it's really, I don't think that it really is too much time consuming now. Um, I don't know, Daniel, would you say anything? Yeah. Else? Yeah. You spend most of the time on a short term rental business. So I would say probably between the two of us. So that's not just Danielle, but between the two of us, five, uh, to seven hours a week. Um, and that's just us being proactive on things. We can definitely, you know, if we just kind of let things go, it can be less, uh, but we want to continue to put out a great product. I would say with land, uh, it's a little more because I'm on that front end learning curve. Uh, so I would say probably with land, and this is with a flexible uh, job that um, I can, you know, uh, wake up early or take an extended lunch break. I'll probably put in probably around 10 uh, to 12 hours. You always feel like you want to put in more just because you want it to be where you, you're doing five to seven, you know? Uh, so, uh, but that's what I'm putting in right now. Uh, but that's, that's dependent on life, you know? And uh, one thing uh, we are dead set on is that we set this up because, we wanted to step back from whatever, you know, responsibilities other people were putting on us, you know, so um, and because we wanted to invest that time with our family. Uh, so even in the midst of that, we're not like uh, grinding so hard where we're taking time away from our family. So I'm fine with the 10 to 12 and the five to seven. And if we're growing our business at a rate that may not be as fast as others, I'm fine because we still get the chance uh, to invest in our family. So that's really cool. All right. Well, last question I, I have for you. And Joey may come up with another one, but this will be my last one. Danielle, I'll let you go first. So you, you've done a lot of things, right? And, and learned a lot of things. So knowing what you know now, if you could go back, right? And, and, and maybe fast track some things potentially because of what you know now, what would you do differently? I was telling Daniel this the other day. I was like, I wish that we would have started this earlier. I wish that we would have like known about it sooner and started earlier. I think a lot of people, we've had a lot of people reach out to us and ask us questions about it or like, tell me more about that. Or like, how does that even work? Real arbitrage? Is that like, is that legal? And we're like, yes, yes it is. Um, and, you know, and so there's so many people that are interested in it, but like will never take the plunge to do it. And so I think just being like, I don't know, courageous enough to step out and take that leap of faith and do it. Um, I think it has reaped so many benefits for our family and for us personally. Um, I just wish that we would have started sooner. Like, I'm like, we could have had so many more by this point if we would have started before we had kids. Like, this is, I mean, this is awesome. Um, and so I think that, um, you guys have been such a blessing to our family, like just being able to hear from y'all different ideas. And even, you know, I think as an entrepreneur, sometimes it can feel really lonely because you're doing, you're going down a different path. And a lot of people are not going down that path and they just don't get it. And they're like, why would you do that? And um, they don't necessarily see all of the benefits, but um, it, it's a great blessing to be able to hear from other people that are doing the same things that are doing, um, you know, that are our entrepreneurs that are trying these different ideas that aren't just talking about it, but really trying to do it. Um, and so that has been a huge thing for us too, is just continuing to learn and continuing to grow and not being satisfied with where we are, like thankful for where we are, but not like being like, okay, we're done. We're good. Like we want to continue to grow and continue to learn from other people that are doing similar things. So That's so awesome. Same, same question for you, Daniel. Yeah, I would say, yeah, definitely. And I think I've heard y'all say it like, hey, the uh, the best time to plant a tree is what, 10, 20 years ago? And the second best time is today, you know? So, uh, you know, we if we would have known what we knew when we first got married, yeah, we would have started a business and uh, put like trying the career track on a back burner. Uh, but we got to a point where it's like, and it was out of necessity. It was like, hey, our our ends are not being met by our means, you know? So like, what do we need to do? How can we switch this up? 
because it's just not working for where we see where where we want life to be. Uh, and knowing that we that we do have a part in being an architect of uh, what life is going to look like. So I would say just starting, uh, you know, scrapping Dave Ramsey early on in our married life, uh, diving into infinite baking, uh, because we probably would have had a policy that's mature by now. Uh, but and then using that to spin off uh, different uh, business ventures uh, that we you know come across. Uh, I love I love all the things that you guys have shared with us and and I love the fact that it's really out of the goodness of your heart that you'd be willing to come on and do something like being on a podcast because there's so many people that can relate to what you're talking about right now right they're in that position where they just don't know how they're going to increase their means and and this is a, a path and you've laid it out so so generously for them to be able to learn from. And so really, really grateful for you guys to be on the show today. I would love if, if there's any way it's okay for people to reach out to you within the community to, to message you and things like that if they have questions. Yeah, definitely reach out. Uh, we're open book uh, and we're always encouraged to hear from uh, others that are you know starting down the path in any way that we can help. Uh, I've jumped on, I, I want to say a few calls with people actually from the community have reached out. Uh, but also, if you're staying in Dallas, uh, reach out to us. We'll love to host you. Uh, and just don't bring your pets. So, A hundred percent. Well, uh, Wells family, we are blessed by you. We're so grateful uh, for you to be in the community and just to watch you reaching new levels and excited to see and hear what those new levels are. So thank you again for coming on. It's such a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you all for having us. Thank you. As always, we appreciate you for listening to this podcast. This podcast um, needs to reach more people. And the way we do that is you take time to rate and review it. That's how the algorithm knows to share it with other people. But also, don't just wait on technology. Press the share button on your phone and give this to the five people that don't know what rental rental arbitrage is. Give it to somebody who has kids and they want to teach their kids how money works. Give it to somebody who is trying to figure out how am I going to increase my means? Cause I, 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 it's not being met by my nine to five. This podcast needs to be in their hands and we're grateful that you're willing to share. Have an amazing day. This has been the wealth without wall street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the wall street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.